Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So things have been progressing nicely on this Epiphone Junior that I've been working on, and I'm just gonna jump right into it today. You'll notice that I've done all the polishing on the paint on the neck, and even the headstock is really looking good. I've got some tape on there now, but the whole thing shines up really nicely. What I'm doing now, I am preparing for modern tuners on this neck that actually had holes for vintage style tuners. And they're probably two millimeters or so wider than the original holes. I'm drilling these things out to an 11 30 seconds bit because that's what I have on hand. I know a lot of people prefer reamers on these, but I actually prefer to use a stepped drill bit. And I did this on one other project previously. So if you've seen this before, I understand, but this is a pretty simple procedure and the step drill bit helps me keep the hole centered in the old hole so that all the tuners stay aligned. So I have taken a stepped drill bit here and I've marked off my rung just after the 1130 seconds mark so that I know when to stop. And you don't have to worry about these bits taking off in the wood. They just really don't travel very far unless you push them. So let's go ahead and enlarge these holes with this drill. I'll just note that I've got the neck kind of propped up on some other pieces of wood here and that's really to keep my drill bit from running into the bench and also to keep the headstock level while I'm drilling. So that's kind of how it works. Now I always take the step drill bit to just past the 1130 seconds rung so that it goes ahead and carves out the rest of the finish to just a little bit wider than the hole that I'm actually going to use. And that keeps the finish from cracking. Let me drill out these other two holes and then we'll talk about how to finish out these holes. Okay, I've drilled them all through and I've actually finished these last four holes, but I'll show you how to finish the last two. So the reason that I put tape on the face of the headstock is so that I can put a wooden block up against the hole. And the reason that I want to put a wooden block up against the hole is that I'm going to clamp this onto the face of the headstock. Then I'm going to use an 11 30 seconds drill bit to finish this hole but the block is going to stop it from going all the way through and the reason I want to do that is because I really want the front of the headstock to keep the original size hole and the back of the headstock to have the larger hole. The ferrule for the new tuners actually fits into the original hole but the body of the tuner does not and so that's sort of the best of both worlds. It's the least amount of space that the back side needs and the least amount of space that the front side needs. So now at this point, I've got the rear holes drilled at 11.30 seconds, and there's about a sixteenth of an inch left that actually is probably close to about a 5 8 hole on the front. And that's all the space that's required to put the ferrules through for the new tuners. So this is the style of tuner I'm going to be using. It's a Geiker 1 to 21 ratio top locking tuner. And I've never really seen these or used these before, but they have these locks that install at the top of the posts that actually lock the string down. It's a little bit different than the locks you normally see on the backs of the tuners. Now to get these set up, all I like to do Obviously you have to take the lock off the top first, drop them through the hole, and then put the ferrule in the front and tighten it down enough so that it holds this whole unit steady. And then you can drill the pilot holes in the back of the neck for the screws. I like to get the nuts just tight enough so that they sort of hold this tuner where I can move it a little bit to reposition it, but it'll stay in place while I drill it. Now one of the worst things in the world that could happen right now as I'm drilling these out is that I go too far through and I push through the face of that headstock that I just polished up. So I don't want that to happen. So I make a little stop on my drill bit with some tape and that will tell me not only where to stop but also it's thick enough that it sort of prevents it from going through that tuner hole. So this thing is starting to look like a guitar again, and I'm really happy about that. I'll show you some still pictures of the headstock on the front, and you'll really get to see those locking mechanisms that are on these things. They're kind of strange, but actually kind of cool too. And then I'll also show you a picture of the back, so you can see the completed screw installation and everything. I'll also show you some pictures of the pot area and the wiring that I've done in there. 
and also the switch area and the wiring that I've done in there. I obviously don't have the humbucker in here yet, so that's prevented me from finishing up this switch area. But this pot area is actually ready for me to install the cover, so we can actually do that now. Now on this cover, I've gone ahead and installed some copper tape. This is a cover I actually made out of a piece of a strat pit guard, so that's why it has the plastic on it. And now the gratifying plastic peel. I don't know why I love doing that, but I do. Okay, I've got a couple things to do next. One of those is strap buttons. Now, if you recall, when I made this cavity up here, I drilled a hole all the way down through the strap button hole, all the way through to the pickup area. And that was so I could catch the, the tunnel with this wiring here, and you wouldn't be able to see any routing. So I've plugged this hole up here with a quarter inch dowel rod to match the size of the quarter inch hole that I drilled. And then I'll be re-drilling it to attach a strap button. And just for grins, I went ahead and filled this hole down here with an eighth inch dowel rod and I'll go ahead and re-drill that too. And I really just did that to make sure that everything is gonna fit tightly. Now the strap buttons that I'm gonna be using are shallower strap locks. These are some used ones that I've had, but I think the black color complements this guitar nicely. So I'm gonna use them on this project. Okay, and now we can move on to the humbucker. Okay, now the humbucker that I'm using is a Seymour Duncan JB, and it's a pretty new one, although I did get it secondhand. It's got plenty of lead on it, which is really why I like it. I thought about using an older DiMarzio Super Distortion that I have, but I think the JB is more versatile all around, so that's the way that I'm gonna go. Now, I'm feeding this up to the switch cavity because of the way I've done my wiring. Okay, and then we'll need to install the ring. So these springs are really tight. It was a little bit of a bear to get on. The only special thing to note about these humbucker mounting screws, at least on the Junior, is that one of the screws passes right over the tunnel that goes from the humbucker route to the control cavity. So you have to put a shorter screw in that spot. Here on the back side, I have finished the wiring. The wire that came through for the humbucker just passed into this cavity. So all you have to do is strip back the wires and finish up the wiring according to your trusty wiring diagram. So I'll show you a still picture of what this cavity looks like with the wiring completed. And I've also got this cover that we're gonna install. This again is a cover that I made out of a piece of an old strat pit guard. So you can make your own covers if you're making your own cavities. And here again, we can peel this plastic. Now, if you're wondering how I actually made these covers, basically what I do is I take a piece of stiff paper and I make a template that's the same size. You can kind of refine that with a pair of scissors and then get it shaped just right and then tape that down to the pick guard that you're shaping and get that cut out with, you know, 10 snips or whatever you want to use to cut that out and then refine it on like a belt sander or a grinder or something like that until it just barely fits into that opening. So a good tight fit is what you're going for and I think because this one is basically the same shape as this one it really kind of looks like it belongs it kind of looks factory and I, that's what I was going for we're inching along here so I'm going to go ahead and install the knobs these are dopro knobs with 24 splined shafts four 24 splined shafts and they look okay they're a little little on the weak side in terms of the brightness of the white Let's see, seven and a half straight up is about where I like to install my knobs. So seven and a half points straight toward the headstock. Those fit great. Yeah, that fits awesome. So they don't go too close to the body and they fit tight. So happy with those. Let's go ahead and check the resistance of the pickup. Okay, so let me show you what we've done here with this pickup. So the stock JB has a resistance, a passive resistance of almost 16K. Now, if I flip my coil tap switch, you can tell each of the coils has a resistance of about 8k so basically what i've done is when i've tapped it i'm running off this back coil here only when it's not tapped it's running off both coils but the cool position is the series parallel switch which actually takes both of those 8k coils and runs them in parallel leading to an overall resistance of about 4k 
So based on these two little switches here, it's going to give us a whole range of sounds that we're going to be able to choose from. And it's going to give this guitar a lot of versatility out of just one pickup. Well, I think we're going to end the episode here for today. I appreciate you guys hanging out. Next time we're going to have the bridge, the truss rod cover, the nut slotting, and I guess a full setup. So look forward to all that. Make sure you subscribe to see the episodes. I appreciate you guys giving me all the likes and the comments. I especially appreciate you guys visiting my Amazon links. And I'll see you guys next time.